Esta conferencia comenzará a grabarse. Ok, so welcome everyone again, and we are going to start with a short introduction uh, to build up. There's no sound, Emily. efficiency and renewable energy in buildings. The Builder Portal benefits from the expertise of our ambassadors. Drawn from industry and academia, the ambassadors bridge the gap between EU and national level and help shape our editorial content. Want to promote your work? BuildUp disseminates your research, projects and events through a variety of channels. Become a member to exchange knowledge with your peers. You can disseminate tools and resources, share good practices, and consult open source publications. Join the discussion on social media and become part of the BuildUp community, or subscribe to our newsletter to receive the latest news. However you participate, the BuildUp portal is here to inspire, inform, and connect. BuildUp, the European portal for energy efficiency and renewable energy in buildings. Join the community for opportunities and updates. Okay, my apologies for the uh, lack of sound for the moment there, <laughs> uh, but now we're back. Okay. So, uh, it is a, a pleasure for BuildUp to host today's interactive webinar um, entitled uh, New Training Materials and Methodologies for Upskilling in Circular Economy and Construction for Training Centers, brought to you by Busco Circular Project, uh, Valencia Institute of Building, IVE, Spain, uh, Technological University of the Shannon to US uh, in Ireland, and ISSO in the Netherlands, and also, of course, BuildUp. Uh, this webinar is the final of a four-part series hosted by BuildUp this year um, and also organized by the Busco Circular Project. And the series highlights how different stakeholders could join forces to reskill and upskill the building sector workforce with circular skills by highlighting the main takeaways and outcomes of the Busco Circular Project. The target audience for today's webinar is training center managers and educational professionals. So uh, to go straight to our agenda, the session today will be as follows. We'll begin with a short icebreaker session moderated by Gloria Callanan, Project Support Officer at Technological University of the Shannon. Uh, Gloria will also continue with a short introduction and overview of the Busco Circular, Busco Circular Project context. We will then jump directly into the project outcomes that are relevant for trainers, including training materials, training packs for SMEs, e-learnings, circularity games, apps, and more. And this will be presented by Pepa Esparza Arbona, project manager at IVE, and Srija Ragunathan, build a built environment consultant at Circular Economy. Uh, we are then uh, very happy to hear from two guest storytellers about success stories on upskilling professionals. This discussion will be led by Daniela Mazzini, project and communications coordinator at ISSO, while the guest storytellers today are Maria Angeles Roca, Technical Staff at the Department of Circular Architecture, uh, University of uh, Joan, and Domagoj, uh, forgive me, Talcic, <laughs> student at University of Zagreb. Um, and we will then move to our interactive session about opportunities and next step challenges in uptake after the project ends. And we do hope that you as the audience have many questions and discussion points for our speakers. And this will be led by Gloria Callanan and Daniela uh, Mazzini. And then finally, Gloria will wrap up the session with main takeaways and conclusions. 
So again, we invite and encourage the audience to actively take part in the discussion and to send us questions through the GoToMeeting chat. Again, you'll be able to find the webinar recording on the Build Up portal and on our YouTube channel in the coming days together with the presentation slides. So without further hesitation, we'll move directly to our first speaker of today, Gloria Callanen uh, from the Technological University of the Shannon. Gloria, I will hand over the floor to you. Thank you, Emily. Welcome, everyone, and good morning, or at least it's still morning in Ireland. So you're very welcome, and we really appreciate your attendance. We know that December is a busy, busy time of the year for everybody, and that you're trying to finish up for hopefully a well-earned break. Um, so we will hope to be very helpful to you over the course of the next 90 minutes or so. And just to begin, I hope the technology works for us. Emily, if you wouldn't mind sharing just a quick Slido. I don't know if everybody is familiar with um, using Slido. But we just want to warm up the crowd a little bit uh, and just hear from you. As mentioned at the outset, this is an interactive session. We want to make this um, as tailor-made for you as we possibly can. We have a huge amount of resources in Bosco Circa, which we're just dying to tell you about, but let us, uh, as I say, tailor it to your needs. So first of all, the if you could just join this Slido with your smartphone or with your uh, computer, the first question we wanted to ask you is just to get a feel for geographically, where are you based? So the first question is, where are you from? Where are you joining us from? So let's see some of the answers. Netherlands, welcome. I'm from Ireland, in case I hadn't mentioned that, um, but I won't get to, <laughs> I won't try and multitask here. Ah, oh, very good, very nice. Yes, we have Spanish partners in Bosco Circular, Czech, German, Dutch, lovely to see Morocco and Cyprus join us. Very, very welcome this morning. Belgium, yes, we have Belgian partners in Bosco Circular, but lovely to see we're going outside of the consortium. We will keep that live and we will use it for our notes just to see um, afterwards when we're writing up a blog post, just to see where we have people join us from. So feel free to continue to answer that. Um, and for those of you that have already submitted, we'll move on to the second question, which if, if you wouldn't mind sharing, what, what is your profession? What is your background? What is your work? We have specifically titled this workshop webinar uh, to training centers. So training center trainers, training center managers. Um, so wonderful to hear um, what, what background you're coming from. Researcher, great, great. Architects, university professor, excellent. Project manager, project coordinator, yeah, ideal. And you will see in a moment when I talk to you about the skills mapping in the project, how relevant um, this is because we have mapped all of these professions for you. So a lot of this work is done. Sustainability consultant, very welcome. Knowledge developer, okay, good. And I would encourage you to make the session as useful to you as you possibly can. So many time we go to, times we go to webinars and we just listen, maybe with one ear and we're checking our emails or working away with the other, but this, this is for you. So if you can, if you can be present, I know this is a busy time of the year and ask questions and we will have an opportunity later on for you to, to turn off your microphone or turn on your microphone and ask questions directly to any of the speakers. Wonderful, we're director of NGO. Really, really interesting. Great, very, very welcome. And finally, just moving on to the last question in our Slido. Just for a word cloud, we thought this would be nice um, infographic or visual. What, what words do you associate with circular economy in construction? So when you think about it, and, and I know at the outset, Emily said, build up skills, it's about skills, constant battle, struggle, skills gaps, upskilling. We're looking at energy efficiency. We're looking at zero emissions buildings, we're looking at renewables. Just for, t just for this 90 minutes, let's just focus on circular economy. Great stuff coming through. Bio-based materials, love it. Love the connection with digitization. Yep, you, you got it. Waste management, brilliant future. Absolutely. Life cycle analysis. Brilliant. Keep those coming in, please. That's great. That will really help us. 
So, thank you so much for that. I am going to move on now just to tell you a little bit about the project before we get into, just so you have the context. I don't have very much time and as is so typically me, I have 15 slides, so bear with me. And I'll just explain to you maybe over the next five to seven minutes what the Buzz Go Circular project is about. Uh, Buzz, as you've probably guessed by now, is Build Up Skills. And we have a lot of projects in the Build Up Skills family. Is it first called a family? We, we spend a lot of time together um, as projects anyway. It's certainly the Build Up Skills network. Um, there's energy efficiency projects, decarbonization projects, so, so many that I, I couldn't even do it justice. But this project is specifically Build Up Skills as we are looking at uh, the circular economy. Um, Emily, we're going to have to be intuitive here just to see when we can move on the slides. But for the moment, let me just say the Buzzgo Circular Project was very, very kindly sponsored and funded by the Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Programme. It started in September 2021. Very sadly, it is coming to an end in March of this year, but we have a lot of outputs and results that we want to share with you. So it was a 30 month long project, which I can tell you at the beginning seemed like a long time, but it was not long enough. We had 14 partners, 14 excellent partners, any of whom I would work with again, really productive um, over across nine countries. So just to move Move on to the next slide and I do have about 14 slides here I just want to tell you in a nutshell um, specifically how we set up all of the training content so just if you had one takeaway from all of this it is to go to the Buzzgo Circular website because all of the resources are so well explained in there and specifically what I'm going to talk to you about here and I'm sure you will have a lot of questions so bear with us is around the skills and needs analysis and a qualification framework that we have developed so any of these tabs will bring you specifically into you know something that we believe has not been done across um, training programs so across the the range of uh, vet higher education and continuous professional development is specific tailored circular economy content for the program that most likely you as a trainer or professor or lecturer are requiring right now so yeah what do we do check out the website uh, where you will find a wealth of resources so just moving on to specifically something that we led on i'm very proud of this piece of work to sled on of course all of the partners collaborative effort just moving on to the next slide Emily which is around the skills mapping okay so you, you will see a lot of information over the course of the next couple of slides what I will say to you is just listen it's all very um, straightforward it's actually quite intuitive and an awful lot of work has been done for you so if you can just I suppose take that away and then afterwards if you're interested in the new year incorporating any of this training content into your courses you'll know where to find it or of course contact any of the Buzzgo circular team so a very extensive when we started 27 months ago a very extensive skills mapping exercise was undertaken between all of the partners to map 58 different skills across circular economy skills across 38 different roles I mean we say professions every role in the construction sector is professional um, just to map where they were at and the key elements that you'll see on the right hand at least it's the right hand of my screen it may be merged for you the key elements um, such as design for the future using waste as a resource stretch the lifetime all of those were benchmarked against this so we'll just move on to the next slide um, the, a range of roles as mentioned were surveyed and we produce these beautiful graphics which I think really helps to, to understand both new existing and emerging roles and professions so um, we're, we're graphically designed so we um, we had a graphic designer work with us um, and we will be talking a little bit more about these in the next presentation by my colleagues where we talk about the build up skills advisor app so if you are any one of these professions an architect a roofer a carpenter you can click on the link on the buzz app and it will bring you to help you in any of the uh, countries participating on the app uh, in terms of how you can upskill 
So moving on again to the next slide, of course, a lot of detail specific to your learners has all been plotted out. We might just move uh, through the next two or three slides. I just wanted to give you a flavor of all of the work that has been done for you that you can just now take and apply to your learners, whoever your learners may be, um, where we looked at tasks, skills, subtasks specific to circular economy not specific to circular economy but relevant to the work and then if we are on slide seven of my numbers um, skills applied to green roofs because we decided to take a focus not just circular economy in construction which we have a huge amount of resources on but applied to multifunctional green roofs and interior uh, facades as well so all of this has been plotted out there's a huge amount of resources handbooks there for you um, and really really will help in terms of your skills mapping for your students so just moving on just so you know there was a scientific method applied um, we didn't just have uh, workshops happen when you're live on a webinar i think you can hear me now um, so a sound methodology uh, in terms of levels, we had workshops with uh, all of the professions that we uh, outlined across all of the different member states and they uh, told us where their skill level was at and we aggregated that across the countries and across the um, European um, area um, and then we were able, just moving on to the next slide there, we were able to plot what the future skills needs would be um, and then moving on from there there's lots of support again on the Buzzgo Circular website about how you can use these levels to apply them to your um, to your students as I say and just moving on to illustrate to you that they were task based can we I'm not sure if you can hear me that they were yeah that they were task based and why you would use that methodology in terms of your own training and of course we have had um, and we'll discuss that later a train the trainer and mentoring program where this was also applied and I think that is my last slide Emily yeah, okay, sorry, there's one or two others there in terms of integrating circular principles um, and also including very importantly interdisciplinary skills such as collaboration and communication across the trades. Okay, so thank you so much for your time. I hope that has given you a flavour of the work that we've been doing to set the scene in Buzzgo Circular and I now hand over to my colleagues who will talk to you about the actual outputs and training resources and materials that you can use. Thank you. Thanks, Gloria. Hello, I think now it's my turn. So uh, let me introduce me. Uh, my name is Pepa Esparza. I work at IVE, that is the Valencia Institute of Building, that is a rich research institution and training center located in Spain. So we are partners in the PASGO Circular Project. And today, together with my colleague Sriha Raghunathan from Circle Economy Foundation in the Netherlands, we will try to list and explain very briefly the outcomes that we have considered as most relevant for, for trainers and training institutions. So next slide, please. Okay, so these results, uh, well, after the, the overall introduction that Gloria has told us and ju that justifies the huge amount of work done before, we are going to detail specific outcomes, uh, trying to give you some materials that you can use in the future in your own country, in your own plans of uh, courses and planning itineraries since we consider that the target today is uh, mostly from training institutions and trainers. So these results will be grouped into these eight categories. Of course, we have done a lot of uh, training materials that are available for you to be reused, but also training packs, especially dedicated to SMEs. Uh, in total, eight, eight training packs are available on the website. We have also celebrated several Train the Trainer courses 
inside this trainers program in order to create like a learning community uh, helping us to spread the word and scaling the results of the project we have also been working on gamification uh, so Zriha will uh, introduce us in some circularity games that have been developed also e-learnings and finally some functionalities integrated in the build up skills application app so next please okay just to begin with the first thing we did inside the project was to assess and evaluate the available training material related to circle economy in the construction sector so this task was led by circle economy and they assessed and mapped uh, 26 different training modules uh, this was a very really good basis for us to have an overall overview of the training materials that are already available on the website and institutions that offer them for free and accessible on internet and uh, it gave us the idea of which kind of materials are already available and which ones we were missing so next slide please after this exercise we decided to create our own materials uh, that I am going to present to you, differentiating between different target groups. So one of the first of these stakeholders that we consider as a key uh, in the process of, of boosting demand for skilling prof skilled professionals were uh, public procurers. Next slide, please. So a uh, very high quality material has been developed in this sense uh, with the support of iClay, that, that is another project partner. So they have created uh, materials uh, comprising eight different modules. So I invite you to take a look in, on the website because you can find them there. And it's... Uh, material that uh, can inspire or can, or can make policymakers and public procurers uh, how can they stimulate the demand for secular construction uh, through the public procurement so you can take a look on the website you have the website address at the bottom of the slide so please feel free to take a look and and use this material if needed next slide please and next one no sorry the the previous yes the second materials we de developed was uh, prepared for trainers when preparing their own courses so this material was mainly developed by the technical technical technological technical well sorry university of the shannon and it comprises 11 modules uh, so it is intended like a bank of pre material that you can reuse if you need to personalize it of course feel free to do it but i think that it's really helpful because it covers uh, as you can see in the slides was uh, for example introduction uh, circular practices bio-based materials repair and maintenance water energy digitalizations material impact measurement and reduction waste deconstruction and also circular economy principles across the value chain so i think uh, the level of this material is really high and i think that is going to be really useful for you so you can use it partially or as a whole so you decide up it's up to you how to reuse this material if doing that of course we will highly appreciate if you keep the reference of our project as the one of the uh, actors in preparing this material but you are of course free to use it in your future courses next slide please uh, now at the end of the project we are preparing these training packs that were intended to be for mainly for SMEs 
uh, in order to have some material that is for free, that is uh, free, low cost, of course, uh, simple, attractive, and, and, and not too long, because uh, SMEs, we know that they sometimes have just little time and availability for uh, to train their staff. So uh, we have prepared these materials that are in total eight packs. One relate, the first one is at EU level, of course, in English. This one includes an introduction module, but also a second one related to strategies and best practices and uh, cases around all around Europe. And then we have the seven at country level. So after investigating and searching about in each country which were the needs, uh, we have decided on different modules that we are developing now. Hopefully they will be available soon, maybe by the end of this month or due to Christmas holidays, maybe at the beginning of January. But, uh, well, we are working on finalizing this now and I think this is going to be one of the main uh, results of the project that you will can use in the future or maybe even to to train yourselves or, or your own staff. So uh, the seven at country level, of course, will be in local languages. So I think that it's also nice for, for people in these countries to, to have their own language in the, in the training. So it's a good thing for, for all. Next slide. So just to summarize, all these materials, you can make a photo to this QR code or even if you prefer to access this uh, address on the email, but you will find them, find them all here uh, in PPT versions, also in PDF, and you can personalize them as whatever you need. And the next slide, please, and I think the last one. Uh, we wanted to let you know that we have done a trainer's program that consists of uh, train the trainer courses. We have mm -hmm. run three during this year at European level, uh, one in January, June and November. These three were, um, we invited uh, relevant trainers and trainer institutions because we wanted to share with them our materials developed but it was so really important also to get their feedback on how we can improve these materials uh, which were their perceptions about the materials we have developed and very very key was the to know about their plans and the possibility to introduce uh, these materials in their future courses so the idea is has been to create like a kind of learning community. We are together and I think that a lot of synergies uh, will arise in the near future uh, collaborating with, with all of them. After these three European TTT courses, uh, several of the participant countries in the project, that are seven, are organizing and celebrating their, their own national TTTs. So from top-down approach, uh, I think that we are uh, contacting a lot of institutions and people interested in, in how circular, circular economy can be applied in the construction sector to, to obtain better buildings, more circular buildings and, and cities. And I think this is my last slide. So I give the floor to, to Zriha, who will comment on other of the results that I mm, hope will be useful for you. So thank you. Thank you, Peppa. Good morning, everyone. Um, I think I've, you would have already heard. So my name is Srija. I work as a built environment consultant with Circle Economy Foundation. We are an impact-based organization based in the Netherlands. 
Um, yeah, so, so far from Gloria and Peppa, you heard about the wide variety of training materials that we have developed as part of the Buzzco Circular project. Um, I will be introducing you to probably uh, the relatively the fun part of the project. So, um, so we have developed uh, a couple of digital tools and e-learning platforms that you can use, uh, of course, with the objective of wanting to make this whole learning process a bit more engaging and fun. Um, starting with the gamified learning approach. So on the screen, you can see the two games. Uh, the first one is circularity games developed by Circle Economy Foundation. Uh, and the other one, another circularity game, uh, which was developed uh, with ISSO in the lead. Uh, maybe we can move on to the next slide. Yeah, uh, yeah starting with the circularity games of Circle Economy Foundation. Um, so as you can see, it's hosted on the Ganbate platform. Once you enter the platform, there is already a, a, a track, introductory circular economy track, which focuses on circular economy in general. But apart from that, currently in collaboration with Buzzgo Circular Project, we are in the process of developing a basic track for the built environment spe specifically. Um, uh, I'm walking you, I'll walk you through some of the very interesting features that will be made available in this platform. So the first one, as you can see uh, already on the screen, so uh, of course we'll be focusing on a blended learning approach full of gamification. Uh, through the through the through the different modules of the game, you will come across a, a huge variety of case studies, videos, and frameworks, which were of course uh, inspired from the material that we developed in the Buzzgo Circular project and otherwise as well. Um, and third, and probably the most interesting feature of the the platform is that uh, it's developed in such a way that uh, different individuals of an organization can learn and grow together um, uh, in a collaborative but as well as a competitive and environment so as an organization you can keep track of the circular expertise of the individuals in your organization and also plan ahead uh, the circularity training programs that you can introduce uh, for your for for your, for, the, for for the employees in your organization um, next slide please um, yeah, talking back, uh, talking about the uh, the competitive and collaborative learning environment that I was talking about. So, um, as probably a change agent in your organization, you will have access to this dashboard, what we call mission control. Um, as you can see, the graphs and the bar chart here. So, you you will be able to monitor the training and uh, circularity capacity of the individuals in your teams understand their progress their level of expertise um, and and in this way uh, you can already define the targets and learning objectives for your organization and in general analyze the potential of your organization to try to drive this bigger goal of circular transition in the built environment uh, next slide yeah, uh, like I was saying, so we are working on a built environment basic track. These are the six modules that we have for this track. I'm not sure if we can read clearly, but uh, in general, so the first three modules focuses more on in the introductory part. So we, we try to introduce you to the principles of circular economy, the challenges the built environment sector is currently facing, and uh, of course, why it is why is it important for circular economy uh, to be uh, to be adopted uh, into the built environment sector. Um, and the fourth and the fifth module will be focusing mainly on opportunities and incentivization. So why is it, is it going to help you as an organization to adopt circularity principles into your operations? And uh, finally, leadership and collaboration. So this is more of uh, values, not only just at an individual level, but also at an organizational level to understand how leadership and collaboration can be integrated as part of your process. Um, and as I was saying, it's currently under development and it's going to be launched in the month of February, so stay tuned to the Buzzco Circular website to know more. Uh, moving on to the next slide. So this is the another uh, this other game, Circularity game, which was developed with ISSO in the lead. This was developed as part of the VDON transition game series and is hosted on the 2BE collective uh, learning platform. Um, again, some of the very interesting features. I think the first one is very similar to what we had for the previous game. So it's a blended learning approach full of gamification. Um, yeah, other interesting features is that uh, you, yeah, uh, you can share ideas and solutions with other players or your other teammates in the organization. And uh, as, as an organization, you can all, also probably to make, just make it interesting, uh, introduce uh, prices, uh, uh, handout prices for the most liked shared ideas and solutions. Um, we can move on to the next slide. 
Um, yeah, uh, so the primary target audience for this particular game is actually the buildings and installation sector. So as I was saying, it's definitely based on the BuzzCo circular training material, but it was adapted a bit to make it more relevant for this primary target audience. Um, as you can see, so we have actually uh, nine modules, so you can see six and probably six, the rest of the three are in the next slides. Uh, you will be introduced to a wide variety of topics such as sustainable material choices, recycling strategies, different designs design approaches and uh, also to focus on how to minimize waste. Mm, yeah, we can move on to the next slide uh, and I'm sure you will want to uh, yeah, want to access these platforms. Maybe at the end of my presentation, I'll try to send you the links in the chat uh, or of course, uh, as we mentioned in the beginning of the presentation that the slides will be made available on the Build Up Skills website as well, so you can directly access it from there. Um, yeah, I think we can move on to the next slide. So these are the three remaining modules of the platform. Uh, moving on, so apart from all the gamified versions of the training materials, we also have a, a, a normal e-learning platform. So uh, the one, uh, yeah, as you can see it on the screen, so we have a mobile application called Build Up Skills Advisor app. Uh, this app basically contains several self-paced e-learning uh, modules that you can that you can learn and use at your own pace and time. Um, uh, yeah, this is again hosted on the Ozone platform, but I will also separately drop you the link to the uh, to access the application directly, and it's available for both uh, Android and iPhone. Uh, move on to the next slide. Yeah, this is uh, I think my last slide, but also a very important and interesting feature of the Build Up Skills Advisor app is the Bus App Maturity Scan. Uh, putting it in simple words, it's uh, it's uh, it, it is it is a basically a skill gap a skill gap analysis through self assessment. So you will be asked a variety of questions. You'll be uh, asked. Uh, to understand the preference of your topics within the circularity space. And in this way, you will be finally uh, given a personalized uh, guide, a personalized guide or a training plan for you to uh, enhance your knowledge gap or your skills gap in the sector. Um, yeah, you, as you, and again, it's based on the training materials from the Buzzword Circular Project. So you have a wide variety of topics on leadership, collaboration, circularity specifically in the sector, uh, but also a lot of design skills, sustainability material choices, so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, and that was my last slide. Um, yeah, over to you, Emily. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Srija, and thank you, Peppa, as well. Um, okay, let's move on. I will pass over to Daniele. The floor is yours. Yes, hi. Um, hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, so, yes, uh, yeah, my name is Daniela, as uh, Emily said. And in this session, what we are trying to do um, is be very interactive uh, with the audience, as Gloria stated beforehand. So we have invited uh, two people who participated in some of the outcomes of our project that were the mentoring program and the train the trainer program uh, as we said before the train the trainer program um, was a course in which trainers could give us some feedback about our our courses developed and they could also develop their own training plan with those uh, materials that we presented and the mentoring program uh, was uh, a moment in which experienced professionals could uh, guide specific target groups such as women, young people and newer colleagues. Uh, and today we have two very special guests, uh, Domagoy, uh, who is a student from the University of Zagreb, who will share his experiences with the mentoring program, and uh, Maria Angeles, who works at Universitat Jaume I, um, who, uh, who will discuss her involvement as a trainer in the Train the Trainers program, so welcome to you too. Um, and yeah, so I don't know if you want to turn on your cameras, if you feel comfortable, so the audience can meet you. Welcome, uh, Maria Angeles. And uh, I'm, I don't know if I'm the only one, but I could not hear you, Maria Angeles. I'm sorry, no, no. Ah, there we go. <laughs> good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, so, yeah, as we said, this is a storytelling session, so uh, I just wanted to ask you, maybe Maria Angeles, we can start with you to introduce yourself, tell us a bit about who you are, what led you to this point. Okay, well, uh, good morning, uh, 
all the attendees of this webinar. Uh, first of all, I, I would like to thank all the members of the Basque Go Circular project uh, for the opportunity you gave me uh, to participate not only in this webinar, but also in the previous train, the trainers' courses. Uh, special thanks to my personal host, uh, IVE, uh, and its members, uh, Pepa Sparza and Juan Romero, to the invitation to, uh, for the invitation to, the jo to join uh, this project. And finally, I would like to thank uh, Angel Pitard, Director of the, uh, the Department of Circular Architecture uh, at the uh, Jaume Primary University of Castellón for proposing my name uh, as a candidate. Well, uh, I am Maria Angeles, Maria Angeles Roca. I'm from Spain, from a city called Castellón, located to, to the north of uh, Valencia. And uh, I'm, an, I'm an architect. I've been working in both urban planning and uh, building projects for almost uh, 20 years. Uh, I have to say that since the early years uh, of my professional career, I, I was keen on, um, on the scope on, and the concept of sustainability and, uh, and especially the management of uh, different uh, resources as, such as energy and water. Uh, so I decided to acquire a specialized knowledge uh, doing a master's degree on sustainable architectural design and energy efficiency in building. From that moment, I have enrolled in different uh, international competitions and programs, uh, developing research and innovation projects uh, focused on uh, climate change, uh, mitigation and adaptation. Uh, such as the Solar Decathlon Euro competition, uh, the Pioneers uh, program and the Accelerator, uh, Accelerator program, uh, both led by Climate Cake, uh, uh, stands for a Knowledge and, and Innovation Community, uh, which is part of the European Institute of Technology. Uh, well, these experiences uh, allowed me to not only to, to build up uh, skills related to climate change, but also to approach uh, the problem as an, as an opportunity. Uh, and in addition, I, I met and joined people who had the same concerns and the same uh, goals as I had in that moment. Uh, well, uh, we know this is, uh, how, how important it is to, to be or to feel that you are part of a community. Well, another experience I consider crucial to, uh, on the path of being here today is related to social issues in Africa. Uh, I designed for an NGO, for an NGO uh, a home for abandoned children near Kenya. Uh, and obviously in, in this project, sustainable design was not a, a choice, uh, but it, it was a, a must. Uh, so, um, I, Architecture uh, should be created in perfect balance with uh, nature. Uh, and finally, the last leap uh, to get here comes from my current job. Uh, nowadays, I am uh, working at the department or of the chair of uh, circular architecture, um, uh, born out and of an agreement between the Jaume Primer University of Castellón and the regional Valencian government, La Generalitat Valenciana. Uh, and the aim of this department is to encourage applied innovation and knowledge transfer from university to society on issues related to, in, to innovation uh, in the field of circular architecture and in the built environment in order to promote the, the transition towards um, a circular model. And therefore, we are in contact with um, not only not only with students and, uh, and, and teachers, but also with researchers, companies, industry, local administrations, and professional associations with which uh, we also collaborate in our uh, for uh, to, to, for the development of our activities. And in this context, I had the opportunity to attend uh, the courses of, new, of of a new challenge project challenging project uh, called Bus Go Circular, and I'm, I, I really feel very grateful. <laughs> and that's all. I, I, this is the point I, I, why I'm here. Nice, good to hear. You made a, a point about uh, it being important to be part of a community and uh, really yes. feel, uh, how, 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 how is that for you? Yeah, well, in fact, um, that's the, the for me it, it is a paramount it is the the, the a paramount point and the uh, uh, situation that uh, when you when you are trying to you have or you can have the knowledge or you can 
uh, uh, try to to get the tools to um, to reach a sustainable design, for example. But uh, being part of a community is crucial, and and uh, to to move to uh, 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 towards uh, uh, that uh, uh, circular model, a linear model to a circular one. So uh, for me, it is essential to, to that kind of, uh, of feeling that know, knowing that you are not the, lo the, the only one trying to do things different uh, or differently. Uh, so knowing that people, uh, who, uh, uh, knowing people who has the same concerns that, uh, uh, like you, uh, it is, uh, it is the, uh, probably the most important thing. Yeah, I, I agree completely. Uh, maybe just to give the audience uh, a bit of context, can you tell us uh, how was the train the trainer's course and how did you in that experience really uh, came with a community? Because most people, yeah, I gave a short introduction to the, the, the course, but you were the one who participated. So I think it's nice to hear from you. What was it about? Uh, well, um, from my point of view, uh, Train the Trainers program had reached uh, some important goals uh, that I wanted to to, to point out. Uh, the first one is to engage uh, different stakeholders on the construction uh, sector in circular training. That's uh, that uh, that is great because uh, there are uh, different roles and different uh, professions uh, uh, involved. And this is a, a the, it is this is the a, it is this is very important. Uh, the uh, on the other hand, uh, to point out the skills needed to drive the sector's uh, transitions to a circular model, uh, which made evident existing gaps that we have to to resolve, uh, and 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 also. Uh, to transfer a huge, open, and very well-organized knowledge uh, on circularity related to the construction sector uh, in order to develop new courses. courses. Uh, for us, uh, it, is, uh, it has been uh, uh, well. It, is, has, it has been very useful, and, and we are uh, really grateful for uh, for having that uh, that huge material and really very well organized to uh, to go on to on go on working so the documentation search and the existing an, uh, uh, analysis of the circular skills needed in the construction sector carried carried out by 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 the members of the uh, Vasco circular project uh, has been uh, very useful for driving uh, com uh, for driving uh, we have we have used or we have already used it uh, it for uh, to compare uh, or to make an analysis analysis ana oui analysis <laughs> with the current education system uh, in the sector and it has allowed us to expand and improve uh, the content of our workshops on sustainable design and to and the reuse and, and revalue or evaluation of construction and demolition waste uh, and moreover not only have we expand our um, our network of contacts uh, by creating a new community uh, uh, based on circularity. Uh, uh, that's uh, we have already said that it's important. But new approaches and potential opportunities for collaboration have emerged, and, and probably this is the point I, I like the most. Well, very interesting to hear. I think it's a pity we have that. Uh short amount of time here because it sounds very interesting and personally i have a lot more questions about it <laughs> but uh yeah thank you for for sharing that experience and i think it's good now that we switch to domagoy who will tell us uh, about the mentoring program uh so yeah domagoy just again this is a storytelling uh, session so i think it's nice that if you can tell us a bit about who you are how did you come to to join the mentoring program Well, hello everyone. First, I would like to apologize in advance. Uh, I have COVID at the moment, so I might have to mute myself for a few seconds if I must go. I will also uh, have a bit uh, shorter answers if you don't mind. Uh, with this out of the way, I will continue with uh, Daniela's question. So my name is Domagoj Kalcic. I'm from Zagreb, Croatia. 
I got bachelor's degree on university in Zagreb at the Faculty of Civil Engineering. Two years after that degree, I got master's degree at the same faculty in the Department of Materials. I am interested in building physics. Uh, one of the domain of building physics is heat transfer to building elements and uh, buildings energy consumption. As a master student, I worked at the design office that focuses uh, on building uh, physics. I currently work as assistant on the faculty of civil engineering, which is part of the PhD program. Buzzgo Circular project helped me with while writing my master thesis and is still helping me today with my education and with transferring the knowledge on students. And I am very grateful for being a part of this program. Nice, thank you. And um, can you tell us a bit about your mentor because you participated in the mentoring program and maybe say from your experience how that program was, what was it about? Yes, of course. So my mentor was Bojan Milovanovic. He is a professor at the University of Zagreb at the Faculty of Civil Engineering. A professor introduced me to this project while I was writing my uh, master thesis and he is now my PhD mentor. Uh, we are working together now on many different projects such as energy retrofit of buildings, uh, building air tightness, hydrothermal properties of buildings, uh, circular economy, and etc. And he's uh, guilty of me being here. Uh, I like his presentation style uh, and the way he presents his knowledge. Uh, that's why I wanted him as my mentor for master thesis and now for the PhD. Uh, he has a high expectation of his students and he gave us demanding projects to see how we will perform. And that's a good approach, if you ask me, because we are often more capable than we think we are. And he is always uh, available for consultation and to give us useful advices. Thank you, Domagoj. Um, so, yeah, we, as again, <laughs> as Gloria said at the start of the webinar, we really want this to be an interactive session. So uh, I uh, want to uh, ask Emily if it's possible to open the chat in case uh, some participants already have uh, any questions for Maria Angeles or Domagoy. Uh, again, yeah, remember that we're doing this session for, for you, for participants. Uh, so if, yeah, you, I will just open the floor and maybe wait a few seconds in case somebody wants to unmute themselves or put a question in the chat for Domagoy and Maria Angeles. Yeah, thanks, Daniela. Yeah, we haven't um, received any questions yet, but as you said, um, we invite all participants. Any questions? Uh, please, now's the time. Hello, I'm uh, Georgia Nicola Copulo. I'm uh, working in Future Needs and the Reconomatic Project. We have been um, lately in touch with the Basco Circular team regarding their training materials, and I'm very happy to, to join you today and uh, and uh, being introduced to all this uh, material that you have uh, created. Um, uh, actually. Uh, we are also work on uh, circularity in uh, Reconomatic, and um, we are leading the, uh, that um, work package, including the, the education and exploitation uh, for uh, for the program. Um, we are focusing on circularity, but um, our approach is mainly through um, is about automations uh, in construction and how to to contribute uh, following that path. To the circularity of uh, of the sector, and uh, it's really it's early for us uh, because it's the first year of the project. But we are um, it was an opportunity to to meet you and uh, get acquainted with uh, the material that you created since you are uh, soon closing your project. Um, 
So I would like to ask you what uh, what were the challenges that you you had to to put together this um, this material, very useful material that you have created. I already see there are uh, many of uh, of the aspects that you that you study are related to what we do, and uh, we hope we can uh, build up uh, on them. So. Definitely. So yeah, uh, um, I don't know uh, what was the um, uh, yeah what were the challenges that you had and maybe some um, I don't know uh, key key experience that you would like to to share in the uh, of the process that you were working on that. Yeah, good question. Um, I think maybe uh, this is good to to answer in in the next part of the, the session, which is coming up in a second, so no worries, uh, we can address it. But uh, I want to then thank uh, Maria Angeles and Domagoy for uh, sharing your experiences. And of course, we're still on the webinar, so if you want to share anything else or ask a question also to, to partners, that's uh, good. And then uh, Georgia, to answer your question, and maybe we can, I can give the floor uh, to Gloria to open this uh, next part of our, our session. Thank you. Great, thank you. Hi everyone, uh, we're back again. So that was really interesting. Thank you, uh, Daniela, for bringing to life all of the content um, and to our, our two guest speakers, really, really special stories there, uh, to Mary Angela and to uh, Damagot. So thank you, and Damagot, poor thing dying with COVID. I hope that you will be okay and thank you so much for your commitment to join the webinar even though you're not feeling well. And so now for the next 20 minutes or so we have planned an interactive session whereby you can ask us questions rather than us telling you about uh, as we have just we will start with that question and um, but just to say so if you don't feel like turning on your camera um, or turning off your microphone feel free to put it in the chat and Emily will prompt us with your questions so definitely do uh, make it worth your while being here so I will start from an Irish perspective and I invite um, my Busco Circular partners to turn uh, on their or off whichever one it is um, the uh, camera button so that we can see you and um, we will just maybe go around the room in terms of geographically and um, the challenges um, so we also have another partner join us who you haven't heard um, and I will um, I will get him to introduce himself in a moment as we go around uh, another partner from the Netherlands from Building Changes so uh, from uh, the point of view of maybe task-based issues certainly from the uh, circular economy content point of view we had led on an early uh, task you know how these projects go it's split up into tasks that are sort of a little bit like a relay race until you finish one the next group can't start their task so we had a task where we had to harvest uh, already developed content through other uh, programs public or private and um, that had developed some circular economy content and that was actually believe it or not really challenging huge amount of content, content on renewables, on energy efficiency, on zero emissions, even around decarbonization, but on circular economy specific content, very, very difficult. So we had to, um, we had to, to, to prepare all of this content really from scratch as a consortium and it was a huge undertaking. And I think maybe we didn't appreciate how big uh, an undertaking that would be. And certainly in terms of the skills mapping as well, it is quite a scientific exercise as I outlined, but is very, very subjective from one country to another and from one individual architect or electrician to another in terms of their understanding even of the most fundamentals um, around circular economy. So maybe we'll go around the room. Does, maybe we'll hand over to um, the Dutch team to, to follow up on that. Uh, sure. Sibren, do you want to maybe start and introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, but now you're, yeah. um, and, and if I speak too long, Daniela, don't hesitate to interrupt uh, to interrupt me. Now, I was just, um, I'm, I'm from the Netherlands, uh, and I was involved in this project more from the business uh, perspective, uh, meaning how do we take the materials and, and make sure that we adopt those in, in, in companies and businesses. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges that we had is is bring that European perspective where you do like a skills gap analysis on the macro a macro level and 
how do you bring that to the micro level of just one company or one industry or maybe even one individual and um i think that though and that that's where the question is of you know we we produced like a thousand slides of great material but if you know for one specific setting you never need all thousand slides so the challenge then becomes how do i find in this uh, uh huge uh uh, library of, of of content how do i find what's what's right for me and that's you know in a way we did the train the trainer sessions for those but uh the mentoring program is it, where it's really one-on-one -on -one is in another way how we uh, did that and one of the interesting uh things that i found in our mentoring program in the netherlands is that it's uh, on a personal level people need to understand their their role in all of this if, if they want to make their own skills gap analysis on the personal level and we worked um, on the role of sustainability managers in companies uh, and that's that's becoming more and more relevant uh, uh, for companies to to be clear on how sustainable they are not just because they want to but also because europe has a new uh, uh, directive the csrd which will be, become more and more effective depending on the size of your company and then um, what happens a lot is that these companies appoint a sustainability manager and then the rest of the company thinks well wow now we have a sustainability manager so you know all questions around sustainability let's just point those questions to the sustainability manager because he's the expert whereas the real role of sustainability manager is to enable the rest of the company to take full ownership of this this theme of you know the challenges of sustainability and circularity so the role of the sustainability manager is to be that enabler and not to be like the sole expert on all of this stuff and that's um, um, if you understand that th then then you can look at you know what are my skills gaps how do I get in touch with my colleagues how do I approach my colleagues and make sure that they that they start working on this stuff as well and not just you know bring everything to me because then as you say and that's your your backpack becomes too heavy I don't know if that makes sense in other languages as well so a uh, long story short you can you see how this this approach that we developed in the busco circular uh, project uh, uh, really understanding circularity then doing skills gap analysis and then finding the right um, uh, the right missing links in terms of training and and, and understanding how, how we bring that now to to practice to businesses and that's that's really where we are now and and even if after this project and we hope to continue doing um, that so uh, um yeah that's uh in a long uh, st uh, story maybe that was too long and then yeah just let me know uh, yeah, but that's, that's what we're doing and that's to me the real value uh, of, of why we're doing this yeah yeah thank you Sibren. um yeah i'm gonna keep it short so we can maybe hear from spain too uh but for me from my perspective a challenge was to not reinvent the wheel with the materials we're creating, but at the same time add value. So that's, I think, uh, a very thin line and a difficult uh, yeah, balance to, to make because of course training institutes especially have a lot of materials available and the internet has a lot of uh, trade or materials available. So how do we create value with the things we create while not un or disestimating, I don't know how to say this, but like, taking into consideration the things that are already produced and have value. Uh, so Pep, I don't know if you want to, to share a bit of your perspective. Uh, yes, I think that uh, I agree with you, Daniela, but uh, for us it was also important when getting in contact with the stakeholders in our region or countries, I think that when you are giving them something that they can reuse, they feel like a more empathy to the project and then they give you other things. So like, it's like exchanging information. If you go to someone with something uh, that they can touch, they can see, they can read. So uh, they are more open to, to, to give you more information. So in the case of Spain, when organizing the Train the Trainers program here at, at country level, at national level, uh, we found a lot of synergies with uh, companies uh, that really appreciated the general knowledge knowledge that we have developed in these materials and they are thinking about uh, future plans of connecting this theory and materials 
to their products and how push these products into the market uh, with the trust and confidence that there is a theory behind prepared by, by different research institutions uh, with uh, recognition in the in, 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 in this environment. So it's a good uh, symbiosis to be together. Uh, companies, private companies selling their products, but also having the support of knowledge and research behind. So uh, we are really happy with the plans we have ahead. So the project is finishing now in February, but uh, we are listing things that we are planning together with these stakeholders contacted. So for us, the project is not finishing now in February. It will keep on working. That I think that is a very good news for 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 the life after the project. Definitely. Thank you, Pepa. And I don't know if uh, Srija, you want to share anything? We have Srija also part of the project. Uh, any challenges from your perspective? And if not, uh, I yeah again give the floor to anyone who wants to unmute themselves. But yes, yeah, Srija, nice. We'll start. Yeah, um, I think I'll probably keep it short and I think I'll mainly echo what uh, Sibran already mentioned because that's something that we definitely face. So uh, it's one thing uh, creating uh, an introductory track or uh, creating a general track for the larger built environment sector audience. But when you actually want to narrow this, narrow this down to uh, one particular organization, and, and as we all know that built environment sector is so huge and it has so many subsectors focusing on a variety of different materials value chains, construction contractors, and, 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 and many other uh, professions. So if we really want to focus on uh, one organization or one profession, it's it's a challenge for us to make it spe ad adapt the content, adapt the material, and make it specialized for that particular target audience that we want to address. Um, yeah, so I think that, that 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 is something that we have mainly come across. But um, uh, and it's it's always important to understand it's 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 mainly a give and take. So as much as we want to give it to the audience, it's also important to understand from their perspective what do they actually need. You know, how can we actually uh, translate all this theory into practice? How can they actually make use of it in, in their day to day operations? So that's also it's important to understand. So it all comes from a lot of dialogue and collaboration. So it definitely is not uh, one way track yeah that, that that's it <laughs> thank you thanks for that i'm struck in particular by uh the mentoring story that dama guy shared with us and the special relationship um i suppose you would say that he had with his mentor and of course we all know uh bojan who is a partner in the project um, and what an expert he is and just how well able he is to convey the message because that can be a difficulty. And I, I want to share with you just a little anecdote from the mentoring experience in Ireland um, and maybe invite either questions from the floor or um, the other partners to share their experience of mentoring. Uh, we had a number of mentoring uh, relationships that we tested, which I think is, is a really nice angle to a project. You, you don't see that too much. So one-to-one -one mentoring a mentor and a mentee were identified. They were um, compatible, uh, deemed compatible. And then some time was allocated through the project to work with them. So I think even the matching of the mentor and the mentee was very important. And there's a lot to learn from that. Again, all of the outputs of the project are on the website or will be within the next couple of weeks. We had a project in Ireland, which was the renovation of an old heritage building, an old convent building, um, and our mentor worked really, really, really well with them. So it was run by a volunteer group um, and they were the client and then they had contractors and subcontractors work with them and the project was part funded to our national authority um, and was funded for the energy efficiency elements. But our mentor was able to layer that with beautiful uh, conservation and circular elements in terms of reusing windows to restore stained glass um, and to just use bio-based materials and they as i said the relationship between the mentor and the mentee just made the project so so successful and that's written up as a case study i might share the link in the chat it's called the Tulla Convent Project in the West of Ireland and really huge amount of learning from them. I'm really glad that we embarked on that 
And I'm just wondering if anybody else has any anecdotes around their mentoring experience they would like to share. Sabrina, did you, is your... Oh, it's, it's, I'm just uh, um, uh, waiting if, if someone else wanted to jump in. So I, I spoke a little bit about mentoring just a while ago, but um, what, what I liked uh, to see in practice is that um, we, we now have this framework that, that helps you understand what circularity is. And so sometimes we think that circularity is, is, is sort of everything. You know, some, some of us have, has, have read the book of Kate uh, Rauber, which, which is a great book about the donut economy. But for her, it, it, everything you can think of is, is, is circularity. And, and, and in a way, that's, that's true. But to make it practical, maybe that's a little bit too much. And in our, our model, it's a very practical approach, I think, where, first of all, uh, and, it, and it's essentially a circular economies uh, model, of course, that, that we use, where you make it very practical in the first step, just looking at the materials that we're using. You know, it couldn't couldn't be more practical than that. And and I've I've done that with a group of uh, installation professionals. And then you really look at okay, heat pumps. What materials are in those? Is it the steel? Is it the cooling fluid? Is it you know whatever? Um, but then the the, uh, the the brilliance of the model is that you, you you don't leave it there with just you know what goes in input. How long do we use it, the throughput, and you know what happens when you're done with it, like the output? That's that's just the inner circle of the model. Then there is a second circle in in our model of circularity where uh, you then look at okay, now that we know what needs to happen on the technical level with these material streams, now we look at what does it mean for our business models? What does it mean for you know maybe new cor uh, corporations that we need to set up? What does it mean for uh, data and IT management? And uh, you know what does it mean for knowledge management, and, and how how do we need to design things differently? You know, understanding what happens there. So I I found that it's it's a very um, sort of uh, 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 easy to understand uh, and, and workable model to get more grip on this sort of big hairy monster that is circularity. And and in in some of our sessions. Um, just working through that in, in, in it could be like 45 minutes just with a group of experts and you know filling out these these bits in the model and then looking at okay now that we know in more detail what are our our eight elements of circularity now we can look at what what do we think are like urgent skills gaps in these eight elements um and that's just a very handy and, and hands-on way to to get a grip of what what you need to be doing as, as a professional um, so that was just very helpful, I think. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, no, Sorry, cool. Uh, no, the, I think it's especially relevant for training institutes what Seaburn is sharing because I think in general trainers have this uh, urge to be teaching more sustainably, reintroducing circular principles into their 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 trainings, and uh, so then this mentoring approach in which the person that is an expert on these topics can walk them through the, the available materials and then help them, you know, actually introduce them because as, yeah, Severin says, it can be a, a big mess to have all this information available all over the place and then you actually don't know where to start and maybe in some points that freezes you to actually not do it. Right, yeah. You know, there, there's like how, how many sustainable development goals are, are there, you know, and they're all very valid and there's nothing wrong with them. But sometimes you see that companies just look at them and think, wow, that's that's just a lot, you know, and how do I start? And then that's I find that we have a Busca Circular has a very sort of, you know, uh, a hands on model to get to get going, which is great. Yeah, uh, I don't know, maybe Pepa, you want to share something about the mentoring in Spain? Uh, well, uh, we have not been the company dealing with the mentoring program. It has been the FEBEC, uh, the Association of Construction Companies. But well, I think that mentoring is always a, a nice place to put together uh, seniors, maybe with young people. So this transfer of knowledge and enthusiasm from from young people trying to learn and people guiding them in this process. 
So, well, we have uh, hosted here one young person uh, supporting us with creating some tools that we have included in the training pack for Spain. So I think uh, it's also good how students still in the university and learning things, how they, how uh, things can be in the real uh, labor market because uh, sometimes connecting the studies with the uh, business and the real uh, world is, is difficult. So I think that we are uh, having a nice experience together with these young people, this young person. And I think it's a good way to, to approach uh, circularity and to, to, to push these concepts into young environment. Thank you, Peppa. I don't know, Emily, if we have any question in the chat or again, someone wants to just unmute yes. themselves. Yes, I, I don't know. I, I hope that function is available. We're inviting people to do that, but I, I don't know because it's not my platform. I believe they can, Emily. Yes, yes. Uh, you can send to the chat if you have any questions, or again, you, you're welcome to sort of uh, unmute and, and ask directly. But oh. so far, we just, um, I think I said, did you receive the question, Gloria? Yes. Yep, there's just, well, I just so far see one question, which is around training through Bosco Circular for 2024. Now, that is a really good question, but I don't know the answer to any of the partners because we've reached our KPIs, exceeded them in Ireland. So I certainly don't have any. Do, do any of the other partners? have trained the trainer uh, in the next couple of weeks? Do you mean at national level? Either at national level, the question is not specific, or the European one. I think not, is it, this is not prepared, but if someone is interested, maybe they can take a look to the report that is going to be prepared around the three previous ones uh, made at European level and also at national level. So a specific persons will be addressed to be to, to make questions if needed and we will provide with the the contents materials and the the sessions that we have been working together during these uh, TTT courses. Definitely it's good to hear that there's interest <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's yeah good to know and uh, if you can send us a request through the website. We, we of course like to know there's interested par parties because we can always do, there's follow-up uh, projects. So then we can uh, forward your request and then we can keep you in the loop. And actually uh, we do have a train the trainers session in the Netherlands. It's gonna be in Dutch. So, uh, but yeah, I don't know, Severin, if you wanna tell us a bit about it. Well, I, I I can I can confirm that 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 train trainer will actually be in Dutch, uh, and and I I can't see the question we're talking about, but I I, I would uh, uh, um, invite you to just sort of sh share your details and maybe through Peppa we can uh, find s someone to, because I I think that there are plans to later after the project do uh, another uh, TTT, but that's maybe that takes too long for this before the person who asked the question. So in this case, I would just say reach out and we'll. Uh, depending on in what country you're in, we'll find a way to 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 have maybe like a micro session where we just you know have a call and walk you through what's out there, and then you know take it take it from there. There are so many partners involved that that either you know uh, left or right, we can probably find a way to accommodate you. And so just to say that all of the sessions were recorded. Well, so some of them were very interactive, so obviously that wasn't suitable for recording but the presentations um, are recorded and they are on our YouTube channel. Uh, my functionality doesn't allow me to broadcast that to the group but I've sent it to Emily so Emily will put yet another link but it's our YouTube channel um, so you can have a look there um, and maybe I don't know again if there's any more questions but just finally in terms I'm really interested in the gamification I think it's such a cool way to bring circular economy into um, I think some of the speakers you know used words like the missing link or bring it into you know what people are doing in terms of training or in terms of their work anyway and it makes it like a really fun way really engaging uh do any of our speakers we didn't use it in ireland for our um 
training packs for SMEs. We just ran out of time. Um, Srita gave a, a great presentation. Does anyone have any stories about how that went? It's one thing to do it, but how was it received? Any Anyone have any stories on that? About the training packs? In... The, the gamification, how fun was it? Did, ah, were, did people okay. really enjoy it? Well, we haven't experienced yet the gamification part of the project, so we have experienced the, a little the enthusiasm, enthusiasm, enthusiasm yep. of professionals it. in Spain that are uh, looking forward to receive the training packs because we are presenting uh, for tools that are, will be new and for free that will support professionals in the, when designing a project in order to include as many as circularity criteria and functionalities in their own projects. So since they are going to be for free and linked to our regional uh, regulations and to obtain grants from the regional government, I think that it's a very um, whole uh, process that we have been developing and several professionals are looking forward to, to receive this information. So we are finalizing this and maybe at the very beginning of, this, of, Ju of January we will present this in Spain. So, But there are several people contacting us waiting for this to be available as soon as possible. Okay, does sound like a lot of fun. What about the Dutch experience? I, I believe you used it, Danielle. Did, did you use the gamification? Yes, I personally like it, but I'm, of course, biased. <laughs> I think uh, it's very nice that, as Rita mentioned, that you are encouraged to share your experience or what you think in each part with your colleagues, because it really, you know, makes the, the learning um, context, it's part of your context, no? you're really thinking how is this related to what my work and then you're able to start conversations with your colleagues. I don't know, Srija, if you have anything else to add. No, uh, yeah, actually I think uh, as Pepper just mentioned, also the built environment track is still under development but already internally we tried playing the game with our colleagues and it's so much fun, it almost feels like going back to school because uh, it's so much more interactive and you know just the fact that uh, a gamified pl platform is so, um, how to say, the colorful and uh, it, 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 it's, it's never technical. It's not just plain boring text, you know, you you, you interact, you learn, you share. Um, and I think that's a fun way of learning new topics. Um, so yeah, I think, like I was saying, so in, by the, in February, we are launching the platform and uh, I'd invite everyone to explore the platform and try it for yourself. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much. So for now, I think it just um, remains for me to do some conclusions and takeaways. Um, it's been a fascinating webinar and thank you so much for your attendance. Um, thank you to Build Up Skills for having us. Um, I think Emily at the outset had said that Build Up Skills is around energy efficiency and renewables and we're so happy that circular economy has been added to that. Um, I hope that you will have learned that our methodology has a sound basis in terms of the creation of content, that there is a huge amount of resources for you literally right now to take away, to use. The training packs and the gamification are still under development. And as my colleagues have said, we are waiting on the results because the surveys and you know post-course um, evaluations, so they should be ready as self-directed training pieces, which is really, really valuable, so that participants can just go on and do them themselves in their own time and learn about their place in circular economy. That should be available from February. I would like to acknowledge our fabulous storytellers um, around mentoring and training the trainer uh, from Spain, we had Mary Angeles, um, and I loved in particular what you said about feeling part of a community that really resonated with me. And of course, your own personal work in terms of the NGO um, and in Kenya, that was wonderful to hear, it's so important. Um, and also what you mentioned in terms of from university to society and the transition to circularity and how important that is to take it out of the academic world and into reality. Uh, Dominic Guy, uh, thank you again so much for participating, even though you were unwell and was wonderful to hear your positive experience in terms of mentoring to Buzz Go Circular with your wonderful mentor. 
Brojan, um, I have put a link in the chat, or Emily has, around the awards that you have received for your work, and we continue to wish you the very best of luck with your career, and we will watch you closely. Um, thank you to the participants for some really, really good questions, particularly around the challenges of the project. I think towards the end of a project, you're always tending to remember the good times, but you're right, there were challenges, and it's just from those that we learn. I would like to thank my colleagues, the other presenters, to Daniela, to Srija, to Peppa, and of course, of course to Sibrim um, for outlining the contents and their experiences in their individual countries. Thank you in particular to Sibrim for giving us the best takeaway, which is that circular economy is a big hairy monster. So thank you for that. Um, and Daniela for facilitating the storytelling, and to Emily and the Build Up Skills team for giving us this wonderful opportunity. Um, so please do continue to keep in touch with the project through our social media channels, and if you need to contact any one of us, we will be delighted to help you. And I think that's it. Uh, from now, we will write up a blog post about this. Um, and I think we're all thinking about our next steps and our place in a circular society. Thank you so much. Emily, back to you. Great, thank you, Gloria. Thanks. And oh, actually, I can turn my camera on. I've been hiding here. Apologies, apologies for that. Um, yes, so I think on that note, we will round off perfectly in time. Um, so just a, as a final, um, a, a, a big thank you as well, also from, from Build Up Side to uh, the speakers and to the audience, of course, for attending today's uh, interactive webinar. Um, I remind again, you will be able to find the recording of today's session on the Build Up portal and also on our YouTube in the coming days, together with the presentation slides. So I'll, actually, I'll send our, our link to the to our website there too. Um, this is actually Build Up's final webinar for 2023. Um, but we do already have a number of webinars in the pipeline for early 2024. So keep an eye out on the Build Up calendar and, of course, on our social media as well. Here we have some of our uh, links here uh, uh, for updates and information about these. So um, we also actually want to remind that uh, Build Up is a collaborative platform, uh, which means that you can share your own content, your news, events, case studies, tools and more, um, simply by registering um, and proposing content. So check out our website for more details. And on that note, again, uh, thank you. We wish you all a very pleasant end to your week, and we look very much forward to seeing you the next time. So thank you, and goodbye. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Merry Christmas. <laughs>